I'm Richard Ward. I'm CTO of CyberClean, and you're in our learning center in Richmond, Virginia. We like to call this our lab. And this here is the IntelliBot 2000. More about this guy in a second. So why listen to us about robots? As I've said, we've had a 40-year history at this. We've made lots of mistakes in the past. We see a lot of people today making the same kind of mistakes. There's a lot of misinformation about robots on the web today. We're dedicated to giving you meaningful and accurate information that you can use to be successful in your AMR plan. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We're going to be providing more and more information that you can use on your robot program. We'll be introducing you to special people, special know-how, and I'm sure this is going to be meaningful to you as you move forward. So what about this information I promised? There are three things we'd like to share with you about being successful with a robot in a hospital. This information is similar to other industries, but hospitals are a little bit different. Number one, you may be wondering, what is the key to my success? The second question might be, what product should I use? And third, what risk might I have if I use a robot in a hospital? So back to this fella. Several years ago, we tested the IntelliBot units in a hospital here in Richmond, Virginia. What's interesting about this robot is that it uses sonar, not laser. Why does that matter? In a lot of ways, the navigation on this robot is early stage navigation. But CyberClean made it work within an operation. So why were we successful? Number one, and this is a key to your success, understand this is a process, not a product. We successfully integrated the IntelliBot units within an EVS department in a hospital. You can see from the video that the floors are immaculate. This is not just because of the robot. We had a dedicated EVS department that was committed to a robot program. There was a whole process built around running this robot in a hospital. There was a floor program. You can see from the immaculate condition of the floors that there was a program in place. When we first got involved with this hospital, we learned that the EVS department was spending close to $60,000 a year in recoding and refinishing floors. So what we did was we started with their process and we looked at what they were currently doing against what we could do with a robot. The data you see here is a schedule that we came up with to run the robot within their operation. And here's the result. While that is saving a lot of money, that was really not the story here. The EVS department could move their existing staff into the patient rooms where they could do more cleaning. That reduced the amount of infections within the rooms and decreased the readmittance rates. So it wasn't just about a robot cleaning the floors. It was about repurposing of that labor to more productive and more meaningful task. But that required a coordination of the EVS department and the robot company. It may be silly to just say, we could just take this robot, stick it in there, and everything would be perfect. But we had a dedicated EVS manager who was behind the program. All right, number two, what product should I use? As I said before, this robot is entry-level navigation using sonar. But we made it work within the operation. So it was less about the technology and more about the products and services around that technology. What you see here in this video, while it's entry-level navigation, this robot is very advanced with its cleaning mechanisms. You can see it here in the video backing up and making sure it was not leaving water. That particular process that this robot goes through is critical to operating in a public environment. You don't want to leave water in a floor in a hospital. The second issue is long hallways. This robot, as you can see in the video, is one of the only ones that has a zero turn radius within those cubby holes you're looking at right there. So what product do I use? Be sure you understand the turn radius of that robot and make sure that it can turn within the hallways that you're putting this into. CyberClean can tell you that a lot of technology out there today has difficulty with turn radiuses. All right, number three, risk. How can I get in trouble? Number one, safety. There's an unrealistic belief that you can just stick robots into an area, just let it go and walk away. You cannot do this in a hospital. Two reasons. 
Number one is safety. These robots work with water, so you can't leave water behind. So someone needs to be nearby the robot to be sure it's not leaving water. And of course, use your wet floor signs. Number two issue in a hospital. Hospital administration and the nurses and the staff will tell you, please don't block the hallways. Robots, no robots, have any idea what kind of device is coming down the hallway. They don't know whether it's a tray on the side of the hall or whether it's a person in a hospital bed being rushed to ICU. The other reason you need to be nearby is if that robot's in the way of that person in that ICU bed, you need to move it out of the way. So we at CyberClean always suggest that no robots are run in critical areas in hospitals, ERs, emergency room areas, areas that are critical for patient care need to be avoided. There's a lot of IntelliBot units in the field today. If you're doing a deployment in a hospital, please contact us. We'd be happy to help you look at your hospital, be sure you can automate. We'll give you a detailed map about where the robot will run, where it won't run, and we'll give you some recommendations on which one might work and how much production rates you can get. We hope this video has been helpful to you. If we can give you assistance, please reach out to us. Please like the video, subscribe, chat, however you want to contact us, please do so. Thank you for watching.